remember after accepting my first job offer as a music teacher, being so excited and then going, oh wait, they don't have a curriculum. Hi everyone, my name is Liz Kuchke and welcome to Mrs. Cookie's Music Room. And today we are going to be talking favorite resources for curriculum and lesson planning. It is summertime and if you're anything like me, music teachers, it is that time where you're looking over the curriculum and planning for next year from the comfort of your couch or by the pool. So this video is for all teachers, but I had especially you newer teachers in mind because I remember after accepting my first job offer as a music teacher, being so excited and then going, oh wait, they don't have a curriculum and frantically emailing my cooperating teacher and from my student teaching and saying, I'm so excited, but help, ah, what do I do? What should I get? Uh, all I have is my own personal money. And she gave me some suggestions, especially since I was going to be teaching three levels of preschool and had not student taught or had any field experience with preschool at all. So she was very helpful to me and hopefully this video, I can bring some of that help to you. So I will start out with the resources that I use and then I will end with some resources that I've used in the past but I don't personally own and I still do recommend. Everything will be linked below in the description uh, and I'll also have a link to my Pinterest board called Classroom Wishlist because that's where you'll see a lot more stuff and that's about it. Let's get started. So before you can actually start looking at what resources you want to use, you need to see if your district already has a curriculum or program guide. I, um, my current district does have a curriculum that was brand new, just freshly rolled out when I came to the district back in August. So, um, it's important that if you have one of these to make sure you know what needs, what concepts need to be taught in which uh, grade level and things like that. That's basically what my curriculum is from my district. It's just, you know, for this grade level, here are the standards, you know, the National Core Art Standards. And um, here's what we expect to be covered during that grade level and they don't really care what methodology you use to get to that level as long as by the end of the year that grade has these rhythmic concepts, these melodic concepts, whatever, covered. So I kind of love that uh, the curriculum is open like that because that gives me some more autonomy in what I want to do in my classroom. But it's important to know your curriculum from your district if you have one. So now moving on to books that are your choice. So this first book is actually a book that my student teaching, cooperating teacher made all of her student teachers read. And it is this version of the Kodai Method by Lois Choksi. And um, it is just a phenomenal book. As you can see, it is well loved. <laughs> And I have referenced this a bajillion times. So she had a copy that she lent out to student teachers. But after reading it during student teaching, I knew I had to have my hands on a copy to keep. So I bought one for myself. And um, this is excellent because it explains the sequence and what how, how to go about prepare, present, practice with your grade levels, each one of them. So what's really awesome is that at the end of each grade level, you have the sequence actually mapped out as like a sample for that for that grade. And the light's gonna dim when I do this on my face, I know it. 
but basically it goes over the rhythmic and melodic concepts by um by month and what's funny is looking at this is when this was written oh it's the ideal classroom they have their kids at least twice a week i'm sure and they start in september yeah so <laughs> you have to kind of modify it of course for yourself but it's a great starting off point and then it also has you know after going through grade six and then yeah it goes through grade six then it talks about lesson planning and then at the end there's all of these songs that they reference throughout the book there for you i carry this around like a bible my first year of teaching <laughs> so this is of course my most highly recommended i hope you get it i also wanted to state that uh lois choxy has a lot of books out there that she's uh, been an author on, including The Kodai Context. This is one that I uh, read for my Kodai Level 1. Um, she also has The Kodai Method, Volume 1 and Volume 2, and the next book we're gonna look at. Here we go. This book is the most expensive book that you're gonna see on this list, but it is so worth it. Uh, to be honest, I didn't buy it. <laughs> it was in my classroom wish list board and my mom asked me what I wanted for Christmas one year and I just sent her to my wish list and she got it. I was so shocked that that was what she picked out, but so happy she did. 120 Singing Games and Dances for Elementary Schools by, again, Lois Choksi and David Brummett. Yep, got it. <laughs> All right, this book is just full of awesome uh, games and dances that you can use throughout your curriculum. And um, they're organized by types of movement activity throughout the book. And each one you'll have, let me find a good one. So for example, um, Sailing on the Ocean, they have the music, extra verses, and then on the back they show you how to do the game and there's all the diagrams throughout another great thing about this book is that at the end you have a glossary glossary blah, 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 blah. at the end of the book you have a glossary of all these movement and dance terms where it shows again diagrams I'm a visual learner I really need these um, so those will help you out I love the way this book is organized because um, at the back it not only has that glossary but it also has um, a list of the songs in the order that you would teach them so starting out with your kindergarten songs and all the way through it even has an index of the songs listed by the types of dance and movement skills so for example for Alamond left if you're doing that you could do roll that brown jug down to town on page 101 so it has everything organized so nicely to be able to quickly reference whatever you need and um, that is just one of the most helpful resources I have ever come across so it is worth the price tag try to get your hands on a copy of 120 singing games and dances if you do not have it already now on to a very budget friendly but still awesome resource is 150 american folk songs to sing read and play this is by peter Airdie, and um if you haven't seen it before you're missing out it has as the title says, 150 American folk songs to sing, read, and play. But it has them uh, organized with the um, tone set, so you can quickly find what you need. It labels it up top, but it also has them listed by tone set, I think either at the front. Yep, at the front you can see all the different uh, songs by their tone set and it also lists the um, the vocal range and the meter and it checks off if there's a game or not. So you can really quickly flip through this resource. It is so key for me to have quality resources but also ones that I can use easily and efficiently because you know, we are very busy people. 
<laughs> so 150 American folk songs. I do not own Sail Away, which is the companion book to this. Instead of the orange, it's blue with the white lettering, and it's also by Peter Erdai. And it has just even more folk songs, but they're not all American. And it has sea shanties, hence the name Sail Away. And I really need to get my hands on it. It's in my classroom wish list. It's awesome. But um, if you can get that as well, do it. Now on to a book that I don't have physically with me because it's summer and I left it at school. I thought I had it. Whoops. It is First Steps in Music for Preschool and Beyond by John Feyerabend. And this is one of the books that my cooperating teacher recommended to me when I told her that I was going to be teaching preschool. And I was teaching three levels of preschool, three-year-old preschool, four-year-old preschool, and junior kindergarten. And this book actually has three years worth of curriculum in it. Before um, you say, well, I'm not teaching preschool, as it says, for preschool and beyond. So actually, a lot of these songs and activities can be used for kindergarten, first grade, second grade. I've actually used a lot of these songs and games with my... Um, self-contained special needs class that I taught and that was fourth through sixth grade. So you can get a lot of use out of this. I mean they're just quality folk songs and then finger plays which are more for your younger ones um, and chants and just some great um, great activities to have on hand. I bought just the single book. There's also at the time, I'm, I think you can now, I'll put it below if you can, um, buy like a set with all the manipulatives you need for it as well. So you have the curriculum and like this kit. Um, there's also companion books, which one of my old schools had most of, if not all of the companion books and they were so awesome. So basically in the curriculum book you have um, samples of different finger plays and um, circle games and chants and rhymes and things like that but the companion books are just more finger plays and then another one of just chants and um, they're also really good to have on hand. I recommend them. And the last resource that I use when planning uh, is 150 Rounds for Singing and Teaching by Edward Bolkovac and Judith Johnson. Now this book is excellent because it has all of those quality rounds, easier ones like um, Frere Jaca to um, more complicated ones like the Coffee Round and it has some really nice ones from even, you know, the 1600s. So you have lots to choose from, organized in alphabetical order. And, um, and what I really like is that at the back, again, I'm all about how things are organized to make it easier for me. At the back, you can actually see that they're organized alphabetically or by, um, you know, major categories like, oh, these are songs about animals, songs about Christmas, whatever it is. It's also organized by the number of parts you can use with this round and by, uh, by meter or uh, major or minor and even like a, f a few of them by form. So there's just all these great things that if I'm you know, it's late at night. I'm like, I just, I really need to pick this. And I can go, oh, okay, there are, there are my five options for that concept that I want to teach. So um, this is great for your general music, but it's also great for your choir. I use these all the time with my choir as well. So now we're on to a few resources that I've used in the past that I very much recommend, but I do not own. They were owned by the schools I taught at. 
The first book is An American Methodology by Anne Eisen Lamar Robertson and the companion book Yearly Plans. Now these are just amazing. They explain, you know, the prepare, present, practice approach, how to teach these songs. Um, it has a, a list of different songs available to you uh, to teach the different concepts. And then the yearly plans goes through, guess what, curriculum planning, where you start from the end of the year and you think, okay, this is where I want my first graders at the end of the year. So what do I need to do to get there? So it helps you through that whole process. And um, they're really great. Another amazing lifesaver book is Directions to Literacy, and that's also by Ann Eisen Lamar Robertson. And it's all about teaching your older beginners. So if you are starting out at a school where they have not been working on music literacy, um, this is a great one to have because you can't start off where you start off um, with your youngest kids, your older kids, those fourth and fifth graders are not going to sing snail snail and rain rain go away for you. So um, it's a great approach for um, bringing music literacy to your older beginners. I also can't um, recommend highly enough any of the books by the New England Dancing Masters. I have The Chimes of Dunkirk. Another uh, one that's coming to my mind right now is Sashay the Donut, but anything by the New England Dancing Masters, uh, those folk dances will just help your classroom come alive. And they also have a YouTube channel, which I'll link to. Um, you gotta check that out as well. And then another uh, dancing one is Teaching Movement and Dance. This book, I think it runs like $55, and I really need to get it again because it's worth every penny. I had it at um, my old school, and it's by Phyllis Weikart, and it just goes through all of these folk songs from different countries and time periods and teaches you how to do them. And then if you buy the Rhythmically Moving CDs, I think there's nine uh, CDs, then you have all of the accompaniment tracks for those dances. So you have some really nice quality um, recordings to go with it. And that's also true for um, the New England Dancing Masters. Those books come with CDs so that you have your backup tracks for a lot of those dances. And then there's another series of books that come with CDs to help you out with quality recordings, and that's any of the Jill Trinka books. If you ever have an opportunity to go to a Jill Trinka workshop, go! I went once and I was totally fangirling the whole time. She is awesome. Uh, I have bought me a cat, but there's a lot. There's like Had a Little Rooster. They're all named after folk songs. And it's just a collection of folk songs and... Um, all the games and activities to go with them. And then you have a CD of her singing and accompanying herself on different folk instruments. So those are um, more resources that I love dearly and think you should check out as well if you can. So just to wrap things up, I understand that um, these resources, the costs add up. So I do recommend that, you know, pacing yourself through using this video to help you prioritize which resources you um, need to get next based off of what you have and what you feel you're lacking. Um, and then you could always go to like Donors Choose or write a grant or go to your PTO to help you get resources. I know Donors Choose has a minimum um, of $100, but I think you can manage, you know, putting up a hundred dollars worth of a request. I think you can <laughs> figure it out just doing the 120 singing games and dances. That'll get you there. <laughs> um, so I do recommend going to Donors Choose if you are interested in getting a whole bunch of these resources. So I'm wondering what resources can you just not live without 
and what resources are you really hoping to get in the future? What do you have your eye on? Please go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I'd love to have a little discussion with you on there and you can check out my Pinterest board for more ideas and temptations. So that'll be it for us today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and you can click subscribe to stay in touch for all future videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.